All right, here is the 11th video in my How to Play Blue Water Navy video series. I'm not going to really be playing video, the game here. I'm going to clarify a couple things that I think I was not so good with in the other videos. I'm going to talk about capital ships, and I'm going to talk about limited ammunition. Uh, so the section of the rules that you want to refer to for capital ships is 14.0, and it tells you pretty clearly, any ship with a limited ammunition or damage code is a capital ship, except for U.S. amphibious units, which are amphibious units. So, um, and I'm not sure why it said that, because the amphibious units don't have a damage code or a limited ammunition marker, but he clarified that. I think probably because of this helicopter carrier symbol, I'll tell you in a minute. So, the, uh, the New Jersey has a H damage code, that's a modifier. The uh, Folk has a B damage code, that's a damage modifier. So, so these are capital ships here. Um, but it also says all aircraft carriers, right? And so here is an aircraft carrier that does not have a damage modifier, but it is an aircraft carrier. So this is a capital ship, and you're going to see in a minute why, um, why that doesn't have a damage modifier. Sorry. Um, and also a unit with the limited ammunition symbol. So up here we have a Russian task force, and in this task force we have the Kirov. So I'm going to pull the Kirov out to demonstrate this. Um, the Kirov also has a damage modifier, so that would make it a capital ship also. But the limited ammunition is important, and uh, we will talk about that uh, momentarily. So... Uh, we, I've gone over the damage procedure before. When a capital ship with a damage modifier takes a hit, it rolls to see what kind of damage it takes. And um, if it if it's a if it's an aircraft carrier and if it takes damage, if it has a damage modifier, each of the Air, the, it ha, the owner has to choose half rounded up of the total air unit steps on the carrier and roll to see if they are also damaged. So a full strength carrier would, uh, if there hadn't been any other fighting, would have a full strength fighter element and a full strength carrier air group if it was a U.S. carrier. So if the Kitty Hawk now takes damage and these its air unit here, I know they're not the correct ones, would then have to roll. So the NATO player would say, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to roll for the first step of the fighters and see what happens. And they're going to roll. And they get a three. So the, the first step of the fighters does not take any damage. Now it decides, am I going to roll for the second step of fighters or a step of strike aircraft? They're going to roll for the fighters, and it doesn't take any damage. If the first roll had led to the fighters being damaged, they the, the commander would have then possibly said, well, I don't want to lose all my fighter cover, so I'm going to roll to see if the strike, uh, the carrier air group loses a step. And it, it would or it wouldn't. So that's what happens with aircraft aboard U.S. carriers or any carrier that has a damage modifier. The, over here you've got the Illustrious. This is an aircraft carrier. It does not have a damage modifier. When this unit takes a hit, it just immediately loses half of its air steps rounded up, chosen by the owning player. The Delato does not have a damage modifier, and when it takes a hit, oh, it doesn't have a second step. The Delato is a single-step unit, and so it is killed outright and anytime a carrier is sunk all of its air units go to the bottom with it they can't fly off and land on a base or something a um, couple things to point out here the uh, this Italian ship the I think it's Victor Venedo and the Moskva the Russian unit are helicopter carriers they do not have air units they just contribute to anti submarine warfare okay so now let's talk a little bit about limited ammunition so here's an American unit that has uh, the green uh, missile is a land attack missile, and the blue background missiles are ship anti-ship missiles. Uh, when either of those are fired, it's one salvo, and they're all gone. They don't get to be reused. So if you right-click on the counter, if you have the game, there are markers for this. If, when this unit attacks uh, another surface unit, you mark it with anti-ship missiles fired. If in a future action it attacks a facility with its cruise missile, you mark a cruise missiles fired, and now you know that that ship cannot contribute to that type of combat. It still fights off submarines quite well in this case, and it still uh, defends in a limited basis against um, incoming missiles. Um, the other type of limited ammunition 
are the uh, the Soviet named capital ships and there's actually a section in the rules for these it's right here 13.11 and 13.12 um, these have limited surface to air ammunition so let's take a look at this whole task force here it has two four seven eight including the Kirov it has 11 sand points if a NATO air attack, if a NATO missile attack is coming in and the task force is allowed to shoot up to eight surface-to-air missiles in defense, it doesn't need to bother with the Kirov SAMs at all. But if it's a massive strike and the, the task force commander really wants to make sure he saves the day, he's going to contribute the Kirov's SAMs to that battle. Or he could choose to if he didn't need to, but that would be foolish. When the Kirov fires its first unit of surface-to-air missiles, you mark it here with uh, this counter, which indicates two plus SAMs have been fired. There is one left to be fired. The next time that the Kirov takes its shot, you flip this counter, and now it says two plus fire, SAM equals one. That means for the rest of the battle, the Kirov contributes one point to uh, SAM defense. Um, so with the two plus fired one left, the Kirov fires its full complement of three SAM points. And after it does that twice, it has its SAM value is only one. And if you look at the rules, the other Soviet ship, the Kalinin, is uh, its SAM ends up being two when it is all after it has fired two salvos. Um, OK, so I hope that's clear. Here's the Rorset satellite, by the way. The satellites at certain times can make detection rolls with a single die to try to find task forces. That's a cool part of the game. I'm going to talk more about satellites in the video about the campaign game. But that's all I have about the specifics of how to play this game, which I like a lot, obviously. And uh, so if you have any questions, you can let me know. I'll do my best to answer them. Um, Many, many thanks to Stuart, the designer. I don't know how you pronounce your last name, Stuart. And uh, to Al Cal on Board Game Geek for watching all of my videos and giving me excellent feedback, letting me correct the mistakes I made, which were numerous. Um, but hopefully at this point you know enough to start playing this game. And then the next video I'm going to tell you why you should play the campaign game. All right, thanks for tagging along. Uh, oops. Uh, all right, stop the recording.